know if I even want to make this video <laughs> because oh man this is tough I know you guys want this I know that because the last video I made you guys told me I should have made this instead which Oh, that's always a great feeling. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions on Pokemon Sword and Shield. There's a lot of things I really don't like about the games. There's, there's some things that I do actually really like about the games. So I really don't know how to do this. I'll start it by saying if you watched me unbox the Pokemon Switch Lite the other day, I talked about my hype for the new Pokemon game. I talked about how I was going into these games completely unbiased. I was staying away from all the leaks and I was doing my best to stay away from all the negativity just to love Pokemon. Pokemon for Pokemon and go into these brand new Pokemon games as a brand new experience and just see if I like the games. And the unfortunate thing is the more we learned about these two games, the lazier Game Freak appeared. While not having every Pokemon didn't really bother me personally, it does lead me to wonder what they did with that free time not having to redesign these Pokemon and just include the 80-ish new ones. And I really don't know what they did with that time <laughs> because... Oh, I guess we'll just go ahead and do this. This is gonna be a hard video for me to make because my own mind can't seem to make itself up. All right, are you ready for this? I'm about to review the brand new Pokemon games. You know, literally the world's largest franchise of all time. The biggest multimedia property. I don't know if those are the words I'm looking for, but Pokemon is literally bigger than Disney. And these are the new Pokemon games. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about them. Uh, the game immediately starts with Rose, the chairman for this Pokemon League adventure thing. He kind of oversees all of the gym battle thing, Pokemon League thing. Who really even cares at this point? It's always pretty much the same thing, except this time there's Pokemon that can grow really big. Oh, wow. <laughs> Starting this off great. I know Pokemon games have never had voice acting in them before, but this, uh, th this just feels really empty right here. The character himself is making all these grand gestures and he's standing in the stadium of people cheering him on with some royalty-free beats playing in the background. Doesn't really even sound like Pokemon music. And he's giving this grand speech about whatever it is he's talking about. I already can't remember because I really didn't care at the time. It was a very uneventful opening to a Pokemon game. I really don't, like, I just don't, whatever this is, I'm not, I don't care. The very next scene was where I believe the Pokemon game should have actually began. You starting your adventure, leaving your adorable little cottage. I really like this more natural third person view to the Pokemon games. I have wanted, I have <laughs> begged the Pokemon games to go back to this style ever since the GameCube games. I love that we're finally here, that is awesome. So this is where things immediately get kind of weird because some assets in the world look really great, clean, crisp and beautiful and then and other assets in the world, mostly the environments, the grounds, the trees, the backgrounds are just very bad. And when you mash them together, it ends up creating a somewhat pretty picture. But I can't help but focus on the things that look bad. For example, this cutscene with the three new starting Pokemon. I mean, the Pokemon themselves look fantastic, but Sobble's diving into this very lifeless, unanimated water. Ground textures are just rough looking. Also, I have complaints with the story at the start here. It was just so slow and uneventful. I don't know if it's just me that feels like this. It starts with you just so happening to have this best friend whose brother is in the Pokemon League. He's one of the top Pokemon trainers of all time. He walks up to you and his brother and he gives you both a choice of picking a Pokemon. He lets you go first and not his brother and you just pick a Pokemon and then you battle each other you obviously win because for some reason his little brother picked the Pokemon that is weak against mine. Not a great choice there, buddy, but it's fine. You beat him and now all of a sudden this top league player is like, yes, I want to endorse you to be in this esteemed Pokemon league. The best of the best. Like, like in this reality, in this world, to even enter the Pokemon league, you need to be endorsed by someone already high up in the league. And all you need to do to be endorsed 
It's just get given your first Pokemon and have partake in one little backyard battle. Not to mention favoritism on the brother's part. He let him in the league too and he lost. That's not really an esteemed league that I care about being involved in. I don't know. It, for me, the entire start of the game was just me spamming the A button to try and get through all the text because I really didn't care and it really wasn't that exciting. Also, I regret picking Sobble. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert here. He evolves into like the worst things ever. The first First thing he evolves into is like this little emo kid with the worst color scheme of all time and then the last one he evolves into is like this like slim slender looking lizard thing and it's fine it's better than the emo kid but like I just he doesn't it's not I don't I don't know maybe it's just me I don't know that's very opinion based because Pokemon are subjective, the way they look appeal to different people, but I hated the way Subble ended up looking. Also, going back to the- oh my gosh, I have so many. Going back to these gym battles, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like this formula that the Pokemon games have had for so long is just- it's been done and it doesn't really work anymore. I never really understood how this linear path through the gyms is exciting to anyone still now in like 2019 or even for the last 10 years. It's just not realistic and it's not fun for me. I mean, I don't want to paint a picture of a Pokemon game I wish I had because it just seems pointless at this point, but I dream for a Pokemon game that is a little a lot more open where you kind of just start the game. You're in whatever town you're in and you can go anywhere you want at any point you want, any direction you want to go in and you just know that there's eight towns out there that you have to eventually get to and each one has a gym and each gym is tough and then eventually when you get good enough you can start tackling these gyms that feel like these epic like I have made it to the Pokemon League I don't know maybe I'm I'm dreaming too much now and I'm not even talking about the actual Pokemon games I'm supposed to be talking about so let me get back to it you smash a on a bunch more text and then you end up in a town with characters that are popping in and out depending if you're six or three feet away from them I don't know why this bothers me so much but I hate this. I will say that the town itself looks pretty nice and cute. Again, some things look really good, some things look really terrible. At this point, I can only assume that the terrible things are the assets they've reused and couldn't be bothered to remake. So the new stuff looks good. A lot of the areas you visit in the game look absolutely stunning. Like the cave looks great. The One of the forests later on looks really great because everything is new and created for the first time. But I feel like wherever they could, they used assets they already had. And that mix just doesn't look good. I don't think, considering this is a brand new generation of Pokemon game, on a brand new system, it would have been that hard to recreate some of the things that they have just chosen to reuse. So you set off on your adventure and you immediately realize how linear this game is going to be. The only saving grace is the wild area, which looks awful. <laughs> I love it in concept. It works brilliantly in concept. I have spent hours running around the wild area. These random, really strong Pokemon will pop up. I love that you can see the Pokemon in the grass now, as well as they've meshed in random encounters. It's a really clever idea because I feel like the Pokemon audience was split down the middle. Some people liked the random encounters, some people liked the Pokemon seeing them in the wild. I was on the wild side because who likes random encounters? And then I've even managed to catch one shiny so far. That aspect is really exciting of course and even when you see a Pokemon you already have, if you wouldn't, if you'd like a shiny of it, it's always worth checking. Let's go back to the things I hate. Oh my gosh, these trees! What the heck? So when you first get introduced to the wild area, it pans down across it and it's nighttime. And I'm like 95% sure they made it night intentionally because you would think the first time you see something like this, they would want it to be daytime. Pretty, beautiful, look at this world we've given you. But instead they shrouded it in darkness and night. So the first time you see it, you can't really see it. And that's for the best. Like the lake here looks more like tar than water. I feel like I should be avoiding BTs more than I should be worrying about Pokemon. And then they give you these establishing shots of some areas, like it's supposed to be hyping me up for this really awesome new area, but instead I'm just like cringing and yikesing all over the place because it looks really bad. And then you walk straight out and then you see the trees. And I know there's like a whole meme around the trees looking terrible, but they really do look bad. And even watching them in trailers and, and videos and seeing memes of them online, you don't really get the scope of how bad they are until you're standing there in this area looking at them. Obviously, it, it is an old asset from the 3DS games that they've just thrown over into this game. I don't understand it though, because for one, how hard is it to make new trees? Not that hard because they've done it. Yeah, as I said, you go to a really nice looking forest area and all those trees are brand new and they look 
good. So they have made new trees. Not only that, but the berry trees that you shake, they're scattered in amongst these terrible looking trees and the contrast, it, oh. It, like, how did they not see this? Next to each other, it just makes it even more obvious what is an old asset and then what is a new asset. Like, this, no, nothing here can be justified. It's pure laziness. And, it, and what makes it even worse, even worse, is that it's the same terrible tree copy-pasted around the entire wild area. I'm not kidding. It is the same tree. So all they really had to do Game Freak. All you really had to do if you were gonna do this anyway, all you had to do was design one more new tree and copy paste that one around the entire wild area and it wouldn't look nearly as bad. Sure, it would still be obvious that you've only made one tree, <laughs> but it wouldn't be nearly as obvious as this mess. I know one tree, one awful looking tree shouldn't matter and it's, it's almost like you're making a big deal. I'm a mountain out of a molehill, but this tree symbolizes the entire game, the laziness throughout the entire game. No matter what excuse Game Freak tried to give for something like this, time, budget, money, staff, none of that is acceptable. The reason being what I said at the start of this video, it is the largest franchise of all time. It is above Disney by quite a bit. If you need more staff, get it. You have the money. If you need more money, you already have the money. And then we go into the Pokemon themselves. I don't mind the assets being reused. I think the Pokemon still looks great. My issue is nothing is animated. Look at the way this guy, Toxicity or whatever it is, one of my favorite new Pokemon, by the way. Look at the way he, this move is animated. They just take the entire character model. No part of him moves. No, like nothing changes on this character model. They just take the entire thing and they just shake it around and they put him back down. It looks awful. In fact, this entire battle I had against this Pokemon, he didn't move once. They just moved his character model around, and it looks really bad. It looks cheap. So I don't get why in 2019 with a franchise like Pokemon, I'm looking at this right now. You start doing the gym battles, and while I will say that I was pleasantly surprised by Dynamaxing, like honestly going into this game, I couldn't tell you one thing I cared less about than, than Dynamaxing, but it ended up growing on me. Hey, joke not intended. That really wasn't intended. It ended up growing on me, and I, I kind of like, it's kind of cool. One of my favorite Pokemon is this like big happy squirrel guy. I can't. I can't remember names to save the life of me, but making him grow really big with his big cheesy smile. It's dumb. It's pointless. I kind of like it. But what I don't like about these gym battles are the stupid pointless crap you have to do before you even get to the gym battle. Some of them are fine, uh, like the water one where you need to do a bunch of puzzles, but that's kind of how Pokemon games have been. We have had puzzles before gym battles, so I'm kind of fine with it, even though it feels kind of disjointed in this game. What I don't like is the things like having a herd sheep before it, it's, it's just point, like what does this do to the game? You never do this again. There's no reason to be doing it in the first place. It's nothing to do with Pokemon being a Pokemon trainer. It doesn't benefit you in any way. It's just a stupid little mini game. And the worst one was the, the spinny cups, like you're at Disneyland on the teacup ride. Why? Why? No obstacles in the way, there's no danger, no spikes, like there's no, there's no any reason to be doing it. And it's not fun. It just feels very disjointed and pointless. Hey, but let's talk about the good. <laughs> There's probably more things that frustrate me about the game, but I guess my overall takeaway on things I don't like, it all stems from laziness. I feel like it, just, it wasn't done. It wasn't ready. It wasn't finished. And I don't even think adding in all the extra Pokemon would change that. None of them are gonna feel real, feel alive, feel like they have personalities beyond their little animations that you see in the Pokédex when they smile or something like that. That is the only part of the game that gives them life and personality. The rest of the game is still gonna feel cheap, feel rushed with elements missing, pointless gameplay moments, and, and at the end of the day, a linear game design that I feel like has been regurgitated to death. So the biggest thing I guess it all stems from is what I'm trying to say. It just feels lazy. It feels rushed. It feels unfinished. And it doesn't feel like it has any heart or any soul anymore, ironically. Let's talk about the good. Don't worry, this won't take too long. <laughs> I actually like a lot of the new Pokemon designs. Typically with a new Pokemon game, I look at a lot of them and I'm like, what the heck have you run out of ideas 
but this time around, there's actually a lot that I like. I really like Snicket and Thievil. I think they're adorable. The little toxic monster guy, oh my gosh, he might be my favorite. I, I want to get him as a plushie. So yeah, there's a lot of new Pokemon that I really like, and because I sort of didn't really play much of the previous generations, a lot of those Pokemon I haven't seen before too, so I'm still finding a lot of things that I like that even if they're a little old. As I said, despite its flaws, I'm really enjoying the wild area. It was a fantastic element that they added into the game. If it wasn't for this wild area, I probably wouldn't even be enjoying the game at all. It just adds so much, not only in itself with how cool it is as an idea, but the break that it provides from the linear story and pointless dialogue and all of that crap, just being able to get away from it every now and then and go back to the wild area and explore more, find new Pokemon I haven't seen before. Again, the really strong ones that pop up and present an actual challenge. Despite how ugly certain areas look, <laughs> despite how lifeless it feels other than all the Pokemon that are in it, uh, I do really like this wild area and I hope it's something that they keep or flesh out in the future. And then, um, curry on rice. <laughs> I just can't help but laugh every time I make some uh, delicious curry on rice. Sadly, that's about all that I really like though. I'm actually enjoying my time with the game and I know it might not have seemed like that despite all my complaints and I, I doesn't like invalidate any of my complaints, but I am actually having fun and most of that is stemming from the wild area because I have spent at least half my game in that area. I like it. I just, you know, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but I like it. I would recommend it. <sighs> what are your thoughts on Pokemon? I know you have some. Would you recommend liking, commenting, and subscribing? No, never. Bye.